Facebook Live. Good morning, YouTube. We are glad to be here, and I'm glad to see you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are blessed to be able to be here amongst the living and in his presence. We're thankful and happy that God has spared us yet another day. We, we, we got to make sure that we don't take it for granted. The fact that we're here and the fact that we're alive. This is a blessing from God. Somebody laid down last night. But did not wake up this morning. But yet God saw fit for each and every one of us. And those of you who are watching, God saw fit for you to be able to, to be here. For that, you, you, you owe him gratitude. You go owe him thanks. Amen? Amen. We, we thank God for each and every one of you. And again, we appreciate you being here. If you're visiting today, we say thank God for you. We appreciate you being here. If you're here for the thousandth time, then we say thank you for being here. We appreciate you. We, we uh, uh, love you and thank God for you as well. Uh, obviously, you can tell we got some things going on, but how many of you know that God is still in control? And we're not going to allow that stuff to hinder what it is God has for us today. Amen? Amen. So I know you have your Bible. So I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. We're going to begin reading at verse number 1. I thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. We stand up for a lot of stuff, don't we? You know? If you're like me, after a while, you're probably going to watch some football. If your team is winning and they score a touchdown, chances are you're going to jump up. <laughs> you know, if you're a basketball fan like I am, if somebody drive down the lane and, and make up and, uh, and, and crunch on somebody, uh, you know, it'll make you get up out your seat sometime, right? So surely this word of God is worth standing up for. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. When you have that, say amen. amen. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went up to be taxed everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day and for allowing us to be assembled in this place. Dear Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise for who you are, for what you've done, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessings upon the lives of these your people. God, I ask for strength, for encouragement, for guidance, for wisdom, for health and wholeness, Lord, for whatever is needed in their lives. I thank you, Lord, because you are the provider. And we look to you today thanking you in advance for the manifestation of those things that you've already done in heaven. And Father, we pray for Bishop and Pastor Helen. I thank you for your hand that is upon their lives. I thank you for encouraging and strengthening them. I pray for health and wholeness, for blessings and encouragement. I pray for open doors and for ways made. I pray, God, that abundance, 
would flow into their lives. God, and Lord, I thank you for your anointing that is upon them that flows down. Oh, God, even as the anointing flowed down Aaron's beard and down to his skirt, God, I thank you that our anointing flows down. And Father, we thank you. Lord, help us to stay under the spout where your glory comes out. And Father, help us to remain humble and meek at your feet that you might get glory from our lives, God. Help us, Lord, to live so that others would see you in us and that they would be drawn to your kingdom. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for those who are lost and outside of the ark of safety. We ask, God, that you would touch their hearts and their minds and that you would draw them to your kingdom. Touch them, God. Move in them, God. Allow them to see you, Lord, even through our lives, God. Let the glory of you, Lord, shine through us that somebody would see you and God that they would be open and that they would receive you and Holy Spirit we give you free reign in this place today to do what it is you want to do oh God it's not by coincidence or happen chance that we're assembled together in this place or even on YouTube or Facebook God you, you directed us to this place and Father I pray that you would speak to us help us to receive what you have for us today and I pray, Lord, for each and every one of these, your people, I ask you to touch them now. Touch their eyes that they would see you, not me. Touch their ears that they would hear you, not me. And Father, move me. You come forth in this place. I desire not your glory, but only that you would be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I want to read verse 7 again. It says, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for, for them in the end. Today, I want to talk to you from the thought, make room for Jesus. Look at somebody sitting next to you or nearby you and say, say, neighbor, make room for Jesus. Make room for Jesus most of us have very busy lives in fact many of us are so bombarded with stuff that uh, many times it would seem that there was, there was no possible space for anything else however today I, I, I want you to understand that it is of utmost important that we make room for Jesus in the midst of everything else that we're doing in the midst of everything else that is that is crowding our lives it is imperative ladies and gentlemen that we make room for Jesus and I know I know the the, the job is challenging and I know uh, and I recognize the weight of family obligations and, 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 and oh yes yeah I know there are church responsibilities <laughs> yeah yeah because sometimes we can we confuse it because we, we, we'll look at those church responsibilities and think, oh, yeah, that's me making space for Jesus. But I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of folk who are doing stuff for the church that still need to make some space for Jesus. Oh, help me this morning. I'm telling you, it's, we got to make room for him. I can't help but to believe that the conditions of Jesus' birth was well, symbolic of the conditions of so many people's lives today. Can't you see Joseph going from end to end, knocking on doors, trying to find a place for he and his wife? Can we stay here? No, sir, we're fully booked. No room for you. Knocking on doors. Do you have a space for me today? But yet, time after time after time, they were turned away. And how many times, ladies and gentlemen, has the Spirit of God came and Knocked at the door of our hearts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know some of you are saved now, but how many times before you finally opened the door did he come and knock? He sent somebody your way to tell you how much Jesus loves you. 
Yeah, he, he sent somebody by your way to, 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 to tell you that, that God had a plan for you. He was knocking on your door, but yet you said, no, 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 no. No, no, no space for you today. It's many times we turned him away. Think about it. Joseph went and knocked on the doors and many times the spirit of God has come and knocked on our door and we turned them away. Though he had every right to force his way in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yet, he didn't. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Even though he left his throne in glory and he came and he bled and he died for us, he never forces his way into our lives. But yet, yet he, rather he sits and he waits for us to open up to receive him. The Bible says in Romans 5 and 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Think about this. Some people, if they do anything nice for you, they think that gives them full access to you. Let, let somebody do something for you. Many of them think then that that gives them full access to you when they want you, how they want you. Don't play with me. How many men have taken a woman out to eat. Bought her dinner. And because they paid for that dinner, they thought I can't get no help. You know good and well. Some of y'all been on them dates. Mm -hmm. And here Jesus came. And he gave his life. And yet, he waits. For access. I'm just saying that if he was willing to die for us. Surely we ought to be willing to live for him. Talking about make room for Jesus. If you've not allowed Jesus to come into your life. I encourage you to do so today. I know this might sound basic and elementary to, to many of you. But see, I can't make the assumption that everybody who is listening on Facebook and who is even sitting in here right now, I can't assume that everybody in here is saved. Because mm -mm. if the truth be told, I went to church for years and was on my way to hell. See, that's this misconception that if you go to church, that that's enough. But it's not. Except a man be born again. 
cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, you got to make room for Jesus. You got to give him space. And allow him to come into your life. This morning, if you're saved, then that's great. I'm thankful for that. But if not, my prayer is before you leave here today, before you cut off your stream, that you'll accept him as your savior. See, the, the reason that Jesus was willing to come and to be, be born in such a humble way was so that he could reach everybody. Listen to this. Our, our thought this morning is make room for Jesus. However, what we all have to understand is that he's already made room for us. He's made space for us. Luke 2 and 10 says this. And the angel said unto them, fear not. For behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Say all people. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When the, when the scripture says all people, that includes you. That includes all of us. All of us. The fact that the angel said... And, and, and the fact that they came to the angels, it was significant in that it said that salvation was not for, for, for the affluent, for the ones who were at the top of the feeding chain. Because shepherds were, 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 were considered lowly. That wasn't the, that, that wasn't the most desirable job. The fact that Jesus, he didn't go to the palace, you know, he, the, the, the fact that the angels didn't go to, to the king, that he went to the shepherds. It says, you know what, this, 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 this salvation is, is for everybody. So today it doesn't matter, doesn't matter where you've been, where you come from, what, what is going on in your life. Jesus came for you. He made room for you. And you ought to make room for him. He loves you. He was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for you. I encourage don't be, don't be like so many who recognize the need for salvation yet continue to put it off. <laughs> Hebrews chapter seven, 3 verses 7 and 8 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if ye hear my voice, harden not your heart. I've, I've heard people say that, you know what, I, I, I know I need Jesus, but, but I, I, I I want to live a little bit. You know, I got, got some things I want to do. And then one, once I, once I get, get all those things done, then, you know, I'm going to come to Jesus. And then you got those folk who, who say, you know, once, once I get myself together, you know, I, I know I need to be saved, but I, I got to get myself to get myself together. Once I get myself together, then, then I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to church and, and give my life to Christ. Well, let me, let me let me let me give you this news flash. If you were able to get yourself together on your own, wouldn't you already be together? Jesus wants you to come just like you are. Wretched and undone. Broken and jacked up. He wants you just like that. 
Because only he can fix you. That's his job. Your job is simply to make room. If you make room for him, and all it takes to make room is to open up and let him in. Matter of fact, he'll make the space. Because the stuff that need to be moved out of you, only he can move it. This idea that somehow, you know, you want to live a little bit before you give your life to Jesus. The truth be told, ladies and gentlemen, you don't start to live until you come to know Jesus. John 10 and 10 said, the thief cometh not. But for the still kill and the destroy. But I am come that they might have life. And that more abundantly. You don't really start to live until he comes. You say, well, I thought he already came. Yeah, but he need to come in you. Allow him in so you can really start to live, so you can experience this abundant life. I'm telling you, as Christians, we, we still have challenges. But I can tell you that I wouldn't trade one day of my life with Jesus for the whole time I spent without it. Not one. I'm telling you. You don't really, you don't know what you don't know. That's the problem. Satan has a way of, of, of deceiving us and making us feel like the mess that he has is so much better than what God has. But he is a lie and the father of lies. He'll try to deceive you to make you feel like somehow you're really giving up something. I promise you, you, you won't, you're not giving up anything or not anything worth having. Psalms 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Notice it didn't say, Oh, taste and see if it's good. You know, sometimes, sometimes when we, when we eat, you know, something for the first time, we taste to see if it's good. Because, because we're not sure. There's a possibility that it might be nasty. I ain't tasted some nasty stuff before. Some stuff that people said was good. You, you can't trust everybody. Uh, some folk will lead you astray. But this word is true. And the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I can tell you that I tried him for myself. And it's good. Matter of fact, it's better than good. It's good. He's good. And unlike some things, 
that's better with something else. You know, mashed potatoes, they better with gravy. Greens. They better with cornbread. Kento beans, too. Mm -hmm. Come on. Some stuff just better with something else. But you know what? This, this Jesus, he good all by himself. He don't need no extra. Good all by himself. You know, there's, there's a few things that I can eat. You don't have to give me nothing. Jesus is just like that. You got to have nothing. That, just Jesus. He good by himself. Telling you, for that will to make room for him, give him some space in our lives. Just like when you try something, some some new um, meal, some some new um, something, if it's really good to you. You know what you're going to do? You, you want some more. Mm -hmm. and, and then that becomes a part of your diet. Yeah, that, it, it's in the rotation now. Uh, I'm try, oh, yeah, this is in the rotation. Mm -hmm. I promise you, all you got to do is try Jesus. If you try him, I don't have to say. All you got to do is try him. If you get a little bit, you be like, I want some more. I want some more. You get a little, I want some more. The more you get, the more you want. He's addictive. Talking about making room for Jesus. And though I felt it was important to spend some time talking to those who may not know him, I also want to talk to those of us who do. Because let's be honest, many of us who already know him, we need to make some more space for him. Because if we're not careful, we can get caught up into working for him that we actually neglect him. And that sounds, that sounds crazy, but it's real. I don't want to spend my life working for him and not in real close relationship with him. And please don't confuse working for him with having relationship with him. Don't fool yourself. In Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 40, I didn't, I didn't give this to them, but uh, there was a time when Jesus had gone to Mary and, and Martha's house. And, and Mary, she stayed at the feet of Jesus while Martha concerned herself with the guests. She was so busy trying to accommodate everybody, working. While Mary was focused on relationships. Stay down at the feet of Jesus. And so Martha got upset. Wanted Jesus to straighten out Mary. 
Jesus straighten out Martha instead. Because he recognized what was important. What was important to him was relationship. See, when your work comes out of relationship, it's meaningful. But when you're just working, you're just doing stuff, it don't really mean nothing. So I'm saying to you today, make sure that in, our, in your walk with Christ, that, that you're, you're focused on the development of your relationship with him and that you're making space for him. That you don't get so busy with church work that you fail to cultivate your relationship with him. You got to know, the Bible says this, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, it says, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Many shall say to me in the day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name, in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. That's a whole lot of folk doing a whole lot of work. The problem there is, is a lack of relationship. Because he, he, he didn't say, you, I, I, you never did anything for me. He said, I never knew you. What, knowing is about relationship. So what is important to him is us developing a relationship with him. A relationship comes through spending time with him. I mean, I got to pick up my Bible. I mean, I, I, I got to have not just a prayer time, but a prayer life. Got to have a prayer life. Got to spend time. Got to talk with him. It's vital that we Take the time. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay. If the Lord made you and he made the day, it is very important that uh, even though we, we, we're, we're, we're not going to be, we're not going to re relegate our relationship to a prayer time, I think it is important that we, early in the morning, before we start our day, spend some time with him. Why? If the Lord made the day and he made you, how can you have full success in the day without first talking to the maker? If I'm going to have success in today, then I need to talk to the maker. Because by talking to the maker, I can get my instructions. Look, what am I supposed to do today? What's my assignment? You know, he, he, he may not give you full detail and say, well, um, Jim is going to come by your office and, and he's going to ask you. No, 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 no. What you're doing is getting your mind in order. God, help me to be prepared for whomever comes into my gate. Mm -hmm. Prepare me. Equip me with the right, right words to say. 
Help me, Father, to have the right spirit. Mm -hmm. All of that matters. Because then, then if, if, you, if you've had that conversation, and all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is making space for him. Because then as the day unfolds, somebody roll up on you with the wrong attitude. Well, because you talked to the maker already. Because you had conversation with the maker already. Now you're prepared. And, and, and they don't catch you off guard. Because you roll through the day and you ain't talked to him. Wrong joker roll up on you. And they're going to get you. See, why are we fronting? Because the truth of the matter is, we all know that there have been some times when we gave somebody us. And not Jesus. And if you trace it back, it's probably because you didn't spend enough time talking to the maker at the beginning. I can't get no help. But when we make space for him, God, I need you to equip me for this day. Get me ready for what I'm going to face today. Help me to speak with the tongue of the learned. Help me to keep my mouth shut when I need to. Help me to be still and know that you're God and you're in control. <laughs> That's making space. prepare us for the things that we face as we come down to the close of this year let us take some time to look and see and, and all the areas of our lives let us make sure that we're making room for Jesus even if he already has a place in you, I encourage you to, to decide to give him some more space. And don't hesitate or be afraid to move some stuff out the way. Mm -hmm. if, if it seems like God is asking of more, more of you, and whatever it takes for him to have some more room into you, be willing to do it. Because what would you rather be filled with? That stuff or him? We shouldn't be satisfied with Jesus just having this little small corner in our, in our life. That shouldn't, be, that shouldn't be good enough for us. We ought to be searching, searching, searching. What, 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 what in me? That, what, what's in me that's not necessary? Maybe there's some friends that you need. You need to let go. Let them go. Maybe there's some old habits that you need to. You, you need to let let them go. Some old ways of thinking. 
for some of you, it might be some past hurt. But you just need to let it go. Because it's crowding Jesus out of your life. Let it go. Some disappointment, some heartache. Let it go. You hanging on to it ain't doing nothing but making matters worse. Let it go. Give that space to Jesus. Let him fill you up. An overflow. Today I'm just saying. And I'm encouraging you all to make room for Jesus. He's standing at the door of your heart. He's knocking. And if you let him in, he promises he'll come in and he'll sup with you. He'll make all things new. Bible says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things become new amen, amen. I pray that something said today <coughs> has been a blessing to you Facebook and YouTube I pray that you've been blessed today sitting there in your home or wherever you may be watching this. If you know that you're outside of the ark of safety, if you know that you have not given Jesus any space in your life, why not let today be the day? Today. Let him in today. Don't turn him away again because the truth of the matter is tomorrow isn't promised. To all of us who are here today in this building. It's not coincidence that you're here today. It's not half and chance. But an almighty God who is omniscient and who organizes all things <laughs> saw fit that you would be here today to hear this word. You got to know that it's bigger than me and you as well. God assembled us today for somebody here to make space, make room. For me. And I can't. I can't. Speak for you. I don't know where you where you are. But you know. You know if you have not given him space. And if that's if that's you today. Then today is the day. This is the moment where you decide, God, today I make space for you. So if you would all stand. If you're here today and you feel comfortable in doing so, and you're saying, you know what, I I, I need to make space for Jesus. I want you to step out of your seat and come down to this altar. I believe that he is here. I believe that he is knocking on your door. And he is giving you an opportunity to let him in. He's knocking. Will you let him in?
I'm telling you that pride will make you say, ah, not today. It will. Pride will say, ah, you know, I don't want anybody to know that I need to give him space. But you know what? It don't matter about anybody else in here. Because, ladies and gentlemen, when you stand before Jesus, you're going to stand before him for yourself, by yourself. It ain't going to matter what Pastor Ron did. It don't matter what mama and daddy did, what big mama and pop did. You're going to stand before him for yourself, by yourself. And you're either going to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Or you're going to hear him say, depart from me. I never knew you. I don't know about you. But for me, I am determined to hear him say, well done. That's my heart today. And I'm still a work in progress. Please believe. I don't stand before you perfect. I stand before you as a man who is striving to be what it is God wants me to be. So today, if you're here and you say, God, I, I, I got to make room for him, would you come? Will you let him in? Will you give him some more space? You say, well, I, I let him in, but I'll Thank mm -hmm. you.